Are you looking for free software to get your child into 3D modeling? Check this out. Many kids have their own tablets these days, but I reckon most of them are filled up with pretty silly games. Maybe you'd like your kid to start 3D modeling and maybe even 3D printing, but you think all the software is just a little bit too hard for them. Well, I've got an option to show you today called 3dc.io. It's available through your laptop or computer browser and free for iOS and Android. Now recently, the Android and Apple versions have adopted a freemium model, which means that some features are locked until you pay for Pro. I still reckon all of the free functionality is enough to get your child started and doing some really good stuff. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. Fortunately, I've had a lot of success with this software. So much so that I had 40 students aged 6 to 10 all design their own key ring which was 3D printed for them to take home. If they can do it, then your child can too. Let's get started. Alright, for this video I'll be recording the screen of my Android device. Don't worry, the iOS version and the PC version work exactly the same. Like in any CAD program, the first thing you need to master is the camera control. As you can see, a single finger swipe orbits the camera, and if we do two fingers for a pinch zoom, we go in and out. If I put two fingers down and then scroll sideways, it will pan the camera. Take a little bit of time exploring this and getting used to it, it will be crucial to be able to create things nicely. The first thing we need to do is select an object by tapping on it. When it's tapped, the arrows will appear about it. Now we have three controls. We have move, resize, and rotate. You'll notice the handles change to reflect each one of these. Let's start with move. To move an object, all we have to do is put our finger on one of the coloured handles and then drag it back and forth. Up and down, side to side and in and out. You can see that the numbers come up the top to help us direct exactly where it's going. Now let's try scale. Now when we drag the handles, it squishes it in or stretches it out. This is the way to resize things. Unfortunately, I haven't found anything to do a uniform scale. The last one is rotate. This interface is a little bit tricky, but if you look at the circle, dragging it up and down is the way that it will rotate it. Picture the circle on each handle as a wheel, and it will rotate as if it was spinning in the direction of that wheel. You can see here for this blue circle that it's spinning on its back because that's the way the circle is facing for the handle. Once again, we have the degrees display at the top to help us get it exactly the angle we want. We've manipulated our first shape, so let's go to the Add menu and add another. In this case, I'm putting in a pyramid. The controls work exactly the same. With the Move mode selected, doing the green handle moves it up and down, and of course we can also rotate and resize like we did before. Here I'm going to use the snapping and I'm going to move it down to the very edge of the rectangle that we first laid. Perfect. If there's one thing kids love, it's colour. If we come to the colour button, we can see a whole bunch of freemium pro options, but all you need to do is click on the wheel and then you can set your object to whatever colour you like. Here I've chosen a nice green and I click on the pyramid to deselect it so I can work on something else. Time to explore more of the shapes inbuilt into 3DC. Let's go to the Add button and this time add a cylinder. The colour that we previously picked will be retained. Here I use the move handles to drag it up into an opposite position of the pyramid. Now let's try another one of the features, the torus, which in kids speak is called a donut. At this stage I was still practicing using the rotate tool so I thought I'd spin around and try and position it on top of the cylinder. That worked really well so now I'm going to move it up, across and into position. Spinning the camera will always be a key control for any CAD program. If I orbit the camera and zoom in, I can finally get in a position where I can tell that it's definitely on top. I'm going to tap on the shape once again to deselect it and we're going to move on to something else. This time we're going to come to add and we're going to explore something that kids generally find pretty exciting and that's the draw tool. You get your finger and you swipe a shape, in this case a love heart, and then it will insert it in 3D extruded into your model. You can see our love heart is here and we can rotate it around and then position it where we want it. I think I'm going to make my challenge to rotate it and position it balancing on top of the pyramid. So you can see here I'm manipulating the rotate handles and now I'm going to switch to move. I'm going to lift it up into place. Forget that you'll need to manipulate the camera to make sure everything's aligned and rotated the exact amount. In this example here I was 15 degrees off and I couldn't tell that until I spun the camera around to be looking from dead on. We're finished so we're going to tap to deselect. I think it's time to step it up a little bit so let's tap on more than one thing at a time to do a multi-part selection. You'll notice the blue block on the bottom is not selected, therefore when I apply the move tool, it's the only thing that doesn't move. Kids can often get quite confused over what is and what isn't selected. 
So there is a handy shortcut for deselecting everything in one go. And to do that, we need to come to tools and then click on deselect. That'll get us back to our default state and we'll be able to continue from there. I'm gonna demonstrate the very powerful subtract tool. I move the cylinder down. I've gone to the tools menu and hit subtract. You notice when I now remove the cylinder, it's left a hole cut into the rectangle exactly where the cylinder was overlapping. This is a really powerful tool for cutting one shape from another. I think it's time to do another example of this to see what we can do. Here I'm going to select the torus on top. I'm going to come to tools and then go to clone. You can see it puts a copy of it next to it. The good thing is when you use the clone tool, if you've already resized or shifted something around, it'll preserve all of those changes that you do. So for instance, if you're doing a face with two eyes, get one eye exactly how you want it and then use the clone tool to set up the second one exactly the same way rather than having to start from scratch. You can see here I'm positioning my two toruses so they make almost a conjoined figure eight. And now I'm going to select them both at the same time and move them to the bottom of the rectangle. What I'm looking for is a partial overlap to test how powerful the subtract tool really is. With the two toruses selected, I'm going to come to the subtract tool. And this time you'll notice there's quite a bit of thinking time. The geometry is much more complicated, so it takes a couple of seconds, but it's finished. So I'm going to come to the delete tool from the tools menu and delete my two toruses. And that reveals the perfect cutout underneath. So it took a little while, but you can see this is quite a powerful tool and it's the best way to hollow things out, which we'll cover later on. The next thing we're going to look at in this quite ugly demonstration model is grouping. If we tap to select two things, we can then come to the tool menu and click group. Now you'll notice if I tap on and tap off, both of them are automatically selected until I come back to the tools menu and ungroup them. This can be really convenient if you're trying to change a lot of things at once. The next thing we're going to do is hit the button in the top left to explore the menu. We've got all of our usual things here like loading and saving files. Saving is done by the way locally to your phone or laptop. But if we scroll down the bottom we have some worthwhile settings to explore. The top one is snap to grid. You'll notice as you move things around and rotate them that it's doing it in increments of about 10 millimeters or 15 degrees. Turning this on or off will give you much more precision. You can set your units to millimeters or inches. There's also a high quality mode which you can turn off if your device is struggling. If your child is needing inspiration, back on the main screen you can press the feed button and that will load things that have been uploaded to the public gallery. Just like social media, kids can like things, they can comment on them and the good thing is if they really like them, they can download them to play with and to modify. Let's pick one at random and download it to add to our scene. It prompts us with a message and then after a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes, depending on how fast or slow your internet is, you can see that our old geometry is retained and the new geometry is added to the scene. Now this is only a collection of basic shapes that have been resized, rotated and scaled in various directions. But you can see it will take quite a long time to generate this. So as well as teaching your child to be creative, this program is gonna teach them to be patient. And I think that's a really, really good thing for most kids. Let's come to a new file and make something a little bit more worthwhile than the example we've shown so far. Let's start by creating a cube and our first job is to stretch it out because it's gonna become the hull of a ship. Now this ship I'm not gonna spend a really long time on because I think the video would be too long, but you'll get the idea from some of the techniques I do here. Now I'm gonna add a pyramid to the front. I'm gonna stretch that out as well to make the nose a little bit pointier. And then I'm gonna do something that we haven't done so far that should hopefully make this a lot more creative. Getting two things to touch exactly can be pretty tricky. So sometimes you might need to go to the settings and turn off snap. That means you can move it less than 10 millimeters and you can get things lined up exactly how you want them. You'll notice as the video progresses, this one's not quite perfect, but I don't think it really matters that much. What I've done next is select both of them and then group them together and then go on to tools and clone them. Now I'm gonna shrink down the second copy so it fits inside the first. And then I'm gonna position it and keep on shrinking it until it's sitting just above and just that little bit smaller. Looks like we're getting pretty close here. So with it only selected and not selecting the first boat, we're gonna to come to subtract and then we're gonna come back and delete our copied one. You can see that we've used the smaller version to cut out a hollow on the inside and to make the hull of our ship. Next thing we can do is to come up to cylinder and we're gonna create our mast. So obviously that's way too large at the moment. So we're gonna use the handles on the resize tool I'm not exactly worried if it's not perfectly circular. I just want to get it looking visually accurate. So I'm going to zoom out so I can keep on using this tool over and over to get it as tall as I need. I'm then going to come to the move tool and I'm going to position it higher in the boat so it's not poking through into the ocean underneath. 
I'll then do some final moving to move it to the front of the boat, just to get it looking a little bit more visually appealing. Now that the mast is positioned, it's time to draw our sails. And to do that, we're gonna to come to the add button and then we're gonna draw a shape of a sail. It's basically gonna be a big crescent. I'm actually gonna let go on purpose early here. And you can see that it closes the shape for us, which is excellent. I'm gonna use my rotate tool, the blue one, because I want it to spin on that axis. And then I'm gonna come up to scale and I'm gonna stretch it out and I'm gonna stretch it up. I'm not gonna stretch it in the red direction because I want it to remain as skinny as possible. I can come up to move and then stretch a little bit more now that it's in the correct position. And then finally back to move again to get the tips of it overlapping with the mast. I'm gonna set it to white because I think that will be a little bit more visually accurate. Now I don't want to redraw this completely, so I'm gonna select it, come to tools and then clone. I'm gonna move it back into position and then I'm gonna to come to rotate and use the blue one to flip it around 180 degrees and then back to move to move it to the other side. Now I think it looks funny if it was perfectly symmetrical. So I'm gonna to come to the scale tool. I'm gonna to shrink it down a little bit because that seems to resemble most of the ships that I've seen so far. Finally, back to the move tool to get it lined up with the mast once again. I think considering I've only spent a couple of minutes on this, this is looking pretty reasonable for a ship. 3D design might be enough for some people, but chances are if you've got access to a 3D printer, you and your child are gonna to wanna to take it to the next level. Let's see the steps that are required. We're gonna start off in our menu and we're gonna scroll down until we find the option to export SDL for printing. All the usual options are here. and In this case, I'm gonna email it to myself. Here we are with our downloaded STL in Mesh Mixer and you can see when we come to the inspector tool, there's quite a lot of issues. You can try and click on these balls to rectify it, but I know from experience that it's not really gonna work, so I wouldn't recommend it. We can examine the problem more closely by coming to the separate shells button. This will split up our model and in this case, we can see we have 10 different components. Trying to slice this for 3D printing in most software isn't gonna end well. So what we're gonna do is to select them all combine them back and then use the make solid tool. After it's first run through, we can see that we have some artifacts when we zoom in here. Also, it's enclosed this little wall. Most of the time, these little details won't really matter, but you can play with the settings and click update. Remembering that when you do, you're gonna have some delay while the computer processes the new changes. Once we accept the changes, we'll see that coming back to inspector reveals that there are no longer any holes. There's one thing that you should do just to make sure it's gonna print, and that's to flip to the underside and make sure it's flat. This one looks pretty good, but just to be sure, what we're gonna do is use the plain cut tool from the edit menu. Now I completely butchered the process the first time I did it here, but the aim is to use the various handles and arrows to rotate it around so it's revealing only what you wanna retain. You can see how I did it upside down, so that way I was cutting off the top instead of the bottom. The spinning it round to be 90 degrees in the other direction and then moving the arrow down so it was just skimming the very bottom of the ship meant I could click accept and it would cut off the bottom and be entirely flat, ready to 3D print. The color change to the bottom surface signifies that we've done the right job. Happy printing. Well, I hope the content in this video was informative enough to get you and your child started in the magical journey that is 3D modeling and maybe even 3D printing. As I'm a teacher, you'll find plenty more coming up in the future on how to get your kids engaged in making and creativity. See you then. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.